everybody, it's Mrs. Avon. Tonight we're going to start Chapter 6, Section 1, which is titled Projectile Motion. In Video A, we are going to discuss, first of all, what is a projectile, and secondly, what happens when a projectile is launched horizontally. projectiles because a projectile is any object upon which the only force acting is gravity. So we have seen in sublevels a free body diagram for a projectile. The only force acting on it is gravity. So it has a downward net force. That net force is equal to the weight of the object, which we already know is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we've worked with projectiles that we simply drop. We've worked with throwing things straight up in the air and then coming straight back down. And what we're going to look at in this chapter is how we can apply what we already know to objects that are launched horizontally and follow a parabolic trajectory. Trajectory is just the path. A parabola we recognize as the shape. And then in video B, we're going to look at things that are launched at an angle. So what we're going to be doing is applying the motion equations to projectiles that are launched horizontally and launched at an angle. So what we want to do first is look at how we can compare an object that is dropped and an object that is launched horizontally. So as you can see in the video, the marble that was dropped and the marble that was launched horizontally at the same time hit the ground at exactly the same time. So that leads us to look at the independence of vertical and horizontal motion. And when we're talking about a projectile that is launched horizontally, there are some requirements. Things don't escape gravity just because they're moving horizontally. So the only difference between using the motion equations before and using the motion equations now is that we have to separate our variables into their vertical components and into their horizontal components. Because in past problems, we looked at only the vertical or only the horizontal. Now what we're going to do is look at both in the same problem. But because they are independent of each other, they both hit the ground, those marbles, at the same time, we're just going to list our known separately. So we start by looking at the first motion equation and the third motion equation. We don't use the second one because it doesn't have acceleration in it, and we know that all objects that are in free fall that are projectiles, whether they are launched, dropped, or thrown, are affected by gravity. So they always have an acceleration. We don't typically use the fourth motion equation either, although it works. So the requirement for the vertical direction when something is launched horizontally. This is for horizontal launch. The first requirement is that it is identical to that of a dropped object. So the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. And the acceleration in the y direction is g, or negative 9.80 meters per second squared. So when I rewrite my motion equations, the first one becomes VFY equals, and VI is zero, so it's just G times T. So if I want to figure out how fast a horizontally launched projectile is going right before it reaches the ground, in the vertical direction is just the acceleration due to gravity times time. The second equation to figure out dy, which we commonly refer to as the height, the vi is zero, so it just becomes one half gt squared. So I can figure out the height that the projectile fell simply by knowing the time that it took to get to the bottom. Variable between the horizontal. 
horizontal and the vertical is, of course, time. Time is universal. It's scalar. It does not have a direction. So for the horizontal, the requirements are, well, we just said that the only force acting on a projectile is its weight. That means it's always going to be accelerating vertically, but there's nothing pushing it horizontally. There is no unbalanced force. The only unbalanced force is down. So according to Newton's first law that we have been studying, a force is not needed to keep an object in motion, and according to Newton's first law, it's just going to stay in that motion. So the horizontal acceleration of a projectile that is launched, whether it's going to be horizontally or at an angle, is going to be zero. That means that it has a constant velocity. So if I rewrite the first motion equation with zero acceleration, it's going to be Vf equals Vi. That's just a statement of what we already know, that the object has a constant velocity. If I rewrite the third motion equation, dx equals vi x times t, there's no acceleration, so I don't even need the plus 1 half at squared because it would cancel out. I simply have three equations to get any information that I need about a projectile. The range is simply how far something travels horizontally. So the variables don't change. Displacement is still displacement, velocity is still velocity, acceleration, time. The only difference is that when we're looking at any variable except the time, it's different for each dimension. We only analyze either our vertical motion or our horizontal motion. Those things are completely independent of one another. sheet that is on the back of your pacing guide. We have one equation in the x direction. dx, or the range, how far something travels horizontally, is equal to the initial velocity in the x, so the velocity with which it is launched horizontally, times the time. In the y direction, I have the first motion equation. If I want its final vertical velocity, it's just the acceleration due to gravity times time, and then if I want its height, or I have its height and I want to know the time, the equation is one-half gt squared. So you're going to go about the problem the same way you did before. You're going to list your knowns. The only difference is the x variables and the y variables have to be separated, and then you will just proceed as usual to solve the motion equations. So I hope this helps you with your problems tomorrow. Good night.